All right, you guys, and we are back. So let me go ahead and get ready to add her onto the stream. Let's see. Hi, Tisa, how Hello. are you? I'm doing well, how are you? I am great, it's so great to have you on this show. I'm super excited. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come on the show. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, so I wanna go ahead and start off by letting you introduce yourself to everyone and then we'll right. dive right into the conversation from there. Absolutely. My name is Tisa Leggett and I am running for Fort Worth City Council District 6. I was born in Fort Worth, actually, at Carswell Air Force Base and was raised between Fort Worth, Texas and San Antonio, Texas. But I went to elementary school out in Fort Worth, just the same. That's typically a question people ask me. Where did you go to school? Where did you go to high school? Right? Um, so just to give us some some placement here, uh, right. with our mother of mercy, a Catholic school. <laughs> Um, and then went on to college at the University of North Texas at Denton, which we cleaned up at the Grammys, everyone. That was <laughs> super exciting to see. Um, University of North Texas and then in journalism, not music, uh, sadly enough. Um, and then I went on to uh, become a journalist. So I worked for NBC5 and other smaller stations across the state and realized that I really had a passion for public policy. Mm. Oh, we lost your we lost your audio. Perfect. Can you hear me right now? Yes, now it's that better. Perfect. Yeah, okay. that's better. Uh, went to um, went on to oh, to working for women's healthcare after working for Chesapeake, and then to Blue Zones Project, where I spent five years um, trying to make, or not even trying, creating policy to make healthy choices easier for the residents in Fort Worth. And yeah. so definitely was a great experience for me. I worked very closely with independent school districts, Fort Worth ISD, uh, Crowley ISD as well, um, to ensure that children had access to healthier food options now. I'm very popular mm -hmm. with Eagle Mountain Saginaw uh, ISD and Fort Worth ISD because we were able to help create um, initiatives to increase their recess time. So mm -hmm. that was super, super exciting um for uh for us oh i am so sorry if you can hear that i have a we have a housekeeper here helping with my grandparents <laughs> um so if that if you hear some some vacuuming it'll stop here in, in just a bit sorry about you, are, you are totally fine wow i first of all wow <laughs> you have certainly been busy <laughs> you know absolutely and so here's here's the thing is that as i have tried to uh, continue my career, you know, I, at, at, at the end of Blue Zones Project, mm. um, I ended up going into back to the public sector uh, mm. at Sodexo. And so after Sodexo was completed, uh, my time there, then I was able to work for the region um, as a public advocacy, government relations advocate for the region of Dallas and Fort Worth. Wow. Um, to create policies to make our region look more attractive. And the reason why I went into local politics is because, or local, I, I hate to call it politics, but local, more localized advocacy is because I was, I am from Fort Worth. Mm. And I think that there are some things at the level of the city that we need to take care of because mm. it does affect the region and our state um, in ways that we can only imagine. But I look forward to hearing some more of those questions and I can tell you a bit more why. Right, yes, no, no problem. So let's start off with the, with the with the beginning can you just tell us a little bit because those who may be watching uh, i find a lot of times when it comes to local elections a lot of people don't know even the basics right, right. they don't really participate in them um and i feel like a lot of it is people just don't know where to start they don't know where to get information they don't know who's simply running for city council they don't participate and pay a, a, any attention to um, to things like that. So my question for you is, can you tell us a little bit about, first question at least, can you tell us a little bit about when the election is, what they need to do, and then the second part would be your answer for why people should start, you know, participating in local elections and why they're so important. Sure. So the first thing is that local elections are the most important. And I have to be really honest with you. And I'm going to be very localized and move so make sure that you're talking here. That's, 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 that's how important this is. Right. I'm going to move, I'm going to move around here. Okay. So what happens is that a lot of the attention 
is for state and federal government. And a lot of the money for fundraising purposes for politics are at those levels. It is extremely disappointing to me as I'm running for office to see that when I know for sure and for certain that local is the most important. I'll, I'll go into detail as to why. If you think okay. about the trash that's picked up, if you think about ordinances, when you talk about even possession of paraphernalia, marijuana that's legalized in other states or the, the, the law for it may be lean, more lenient in other parts of the Metroplex, specifically Dallas. So let's say we have a friend from Dallas who partakes and then they come over to Fort Worth. Well, mm. if our ordinance, our laws are stricter, that individual could get in a lot more trouble here than they mm. would 30 minutes away. That's on a municipal level. People don't know that. That's municipal level as well. We talk about evictions. We, I was under the impression that a lot of the evictions were under the justice of the peace. A lot, a lot of times, apartments. When you get, you know, if you haven't been paying, you know, go up on hard right. times. It happens to, to the best of us, especially right. during a COVID season um, yeah. or pandemic. You know, like we're in that. This is this is not not this is not a season. This is gonna be with us for a while. We're gonna have to get used yeah. to this, right? Um, right. I hope I hope it is a season. I keep calling it that because I'm like, oh, I'm ready to get out of this. It's important. The season change. Um, so for this period of time, a lot of folks lost their jobs. Right. And we know that. So we know they lost their jobs. PPP wasn't coming as fast as it could, mm -hmm. right? The payment protection uh, uh, funding from the federal government. We had officials who were not giving the American people the amount of money that it took for them to survive. So evictions, let's go back local, I promise you, it all goes together, right? Mm -hmm. So let's right. say you didn't get your stimulus money, right? Or you did not get your unemployment money because you tried to apply with the uh, Texas Workforce Commission and you didn't hear back and you're under hard times, right? Right. You get evicted. That also, the city could have paused it. Mm. The city could do that. The municipalities mm -hmm. can help pause those evictions because we're under state of emergency right. and other reasons why. So that's something they could step in and help with. Mm -hmm. And in Fort Worth, they chose not to. Mm. And I immediately said, I've had enough. I've had mm. of the lack of compassion for our fellow residents. Um, that could have easily been any of us. Uh, right. Another aspect of federal, of, of local, excuse me, local government that we don't think about a lot of times, or maybe we have, we just don't know how to advocate for ourselves, is when we talk about community policing. Community, you know, and District 6 specifically is where the uh, Jacqueline Craig incident happened. That was what a woman called the police and uh Unfortunately, her, it was for support because her son had been touched by a neighbor uh, inappropriately because he walked on grass or something like that. When she called the police, she's the one that ended up on the ground mm -hmm. and it made national headlines. Mm -hmm. That happened in my district. And so I talked to Jefferson, the death of a young woman who was watching, playing video games with her nephew and was shot through a window in her home by mm -hmm. a police officer. Now, what I will say is that I think our city is moving in a, in a better direction. I am, I'm, I'm very happy to see that. But there's a way that we need to show our constituents and residents that we're listening mm. and that we're putting compassionate measurements in place. I'm not saying they're not doing it. What right. I'm saying is we need to be able to communicate back to taxpayers, back to residents. Hey, this is what we're doing to rectify the situation. Not this attitude of, oh, we're already doing that. No, no, no. Tell us how you're doing it. Tell us what kind of funding you need. The city of Fort Worth, this, the residents just approved close to $1 billion up into 2030 for uh, police or CCPD funding as for community policing. Now, my idea is this. I'm, so with all this talk about defunding police, do not let people do that in Fort Worth. That's distracting in the sense of having the conversation. The taxpayers have already spoken. You can't go backward off of that. So don't allow anyone to get on your show or anything else. It's like, I am not for defunding the police. You can't defund when the taxpayers already funded it. What are you talking about? <laughs> right? It's so distracting. It's so distracting. We're not doing it. We're going to be informed voters. I'm going to tell, tell you about it. It's already done, everybody. Can't defund what's already funded. Okay? So, Love it. so here's the thing. So they already have this, this money. It's already there. What we are asking for now mm. is to have an oversight committee from the citizens 
And we want them to tell us how to spend that money. How to spend it. Not just the city council. And as your if, if elected city council woman, I'm in complete agreement with that. Mm. It needs to have the people who put me in office need to also tell us where to put our money. Mm. So that's that's an opinion that I have. I was just talking to uh, some residents on the north side, north and south side, and, and some folks from LULAC. And they were mentioning to me they'd like to see more soccer fields. I do too. Studies show when uh, young people are involved in extracurricular activity, they're in more positive environments and less right. likely to make poor decisions. Right. And so therefore, perhaps with the CCPD funding, we can use that to have more soccer fields, maybe play with our community police um, and support and have more community uh, conversation with each other to where mm -hmm. everybody knows each other's names. And it's not so much our policing, but it really back to keeping the peace, which mm -hmm. is what I'd like to see police do. Keeping mm -hmm. the peace. Keeping it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for you as a city council candidate, I know you said you're passionate about public policy and there's yes. so much that comes under that field. So for you, what are your top priorities when people say, I'm, you know, when people are marking that they're going to be voting for you, what are the top priorities that you think that you know you want to focus on and that people know, okay, I'm putting her, this is what she's going to check off for me off of my list. Absolutely. So for me specifically, you know, I've got a lots of areas. So I'm, I'm going to pick my top three. Sure. Um, for sure. So digital equity is number one. In District 6, we have a lot of difficulty with uh, broadband access. Um, mm. broadband, and so sometimes people think it's just subscription. Okay. Um, so do I have internet subscription? That's one type of equity and access. But secondly, just imagine, even on this show right now, if if my you know audio was going in and out because of lack of of broadband or bandwidth, mm -hmm. imagine a fourteen year old doing algebra, right? Mm -hmm. And they're doing their homework because of the pandemic. Students are forced to do work from home. Now they're back in school, but what if we have to go back home? Imagine having to sit in front of a computer all day and it's not going at the speed we needed to. And parents are at home too, right? right? Over 75 to 80% of folks are at home working from home needing broadband. So it is in our best interest, especially in rural areas, because the, where my district is, we do touch rural areas. It's not all urban. It's not all city. Um, and so because I represent those folks as well, we want to ensure that they have access. Students and uh, families alike. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, one other uh, important piece is in equity is multimodal transportation. Mm -hmm. And what that means, I'm not talking just about buses, right? To try to get from one place or, or to the other. I'm talking about how do you move around the city? Is it shared transportation by car? Uh, mm -hmm. or do we have uh, rail or, or the like, right? I know for me, I love going to a good basketball game. So I enjoy taking the rail to to uh, to to Dallas to watch the basketball games at the American Airlines Center. But I would love it if I could just get to downtown Fort Worth from Crowley. I'd love that mm. um, and bypass that traffic on 35. Our friends up north of 35, right before we hit the Keller area, or the Keller part, that's part of Fort Worth. My goodness, it's like, <laughs> how do you get out of there? 35 is still under construction, uh, and how do you how do you get around? So public transportation would be the greatest equalizer and mm. it would help with economic development let me tell you why for every dollar spent in in constructing or or investing in public transit we get four dollars back on our return on our investment for the community for the city and we need that also you know i, I was thinking about the fact that my uh incumbent you know when we talked about having transportation at the time councilwoman ann zeta had brought it up for a half penny tax and her colleagues uh, didn't show up. And I, I took note of that. I took note of that. Mm. And I said, well, in order for us to move forward, we got to show up. Right. Got to show up. Lastly, um, I would say that the most important piece, again, is to get back to that community service, compassionate, compassionate community policing. Mm. Um, there are some things sometimes you got to, you know, uh, fight crime. I'm not saying uh, uh, be easy on those that are are hurting others i'm not i'm not right. suggesting that right. what i'm saying is that we have an issue in my district with drag racing versus just throwing the, these young people into jail let's get some partnerships with nascar 
let's get let's get let's think outside the box. Let's get them to racing on actual tracks mm. um, instead of on Risinger, right? Um, also, I would like to talk through game rooms. We have an interlocal agreement with Tarrant County. Uh, the city of Fort Worth does so where we can crack down on those. We had a murder not only two about two weeks ago, two um, yeah two Thursdays ago uh, at a game room from a burglary. Uh, so there's unintended consequences with that. Two in the morning, that's that's and it's not it's just not appropriate, for, especially during the week. It's in a res right. close to residential area. Um, it, it, you know we need to we need to put a stop to that. So we can do that through conversation and then obviously with policy. Right, absolutely. So I'm curious to know a little bit more about your passion for public policy. Sure. When did you realize, because I know you said in the beginning of the interview that you started off in journalism and then I you transitioned, yeah, to public policy, which is which is very interesting. So can you, you kind of walk us through that? What spoke to you? So much, what spoke to you in terms of public policy where you said, this is what I want to do, you know, from now on? That's a great question. Um, it did not happen for me immediately because I had to understand what it really meant, especially when you're working for public policy for a corporation. Mm. That is a completely different ball game than with, um, you know, dealing with people or individuals, mm. you know, their day to day. Once I understood how what I'm doing for a corporation actually does affect people's mm -hmm. day to day. How can I leverage what I know now for good? And if you know anything about me, I am uh, one. I'm an advocate. You know, my dad was uh, diagnosed with diabetes when I was a kid. As he got older, you know, we had more hospital visits, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And when we go to the hospital everyone sends me because I am watching the policies of the hospital. I am looking mm -hmm. at what my dad's care is. I have a binder that I keep all of his medications. And because he's with the um, VA, which shout out to the, uh, the VA, mm -hmm. we are, are grateful for the care. However, they are bombarded. Mm. And so in order for us to get him through the system, somebody had to advocate for him. Mm. And that was me. And I said, if I can do this for my daddy, I can definitely do it for my neighbor. Right. I can do this for anyone. And so I advocate for women's health, um, for access, for insurance, for anything that we need as working class policy is who is is what is instituted, it's supposed to protect us. Mm. Right now, you have a group of folks trying to use policy against us. And that's with voting access. Mm. I want to use this opportunity of what I've learned along my career to help everybody in the community. We have to understand every time we vote, it matters. Mm. Every time. In this particular case, you have state representatives, state lawmakers who want to prevent people from voting. Mm. period we already have low voter turnout already it was a, only about 6,000 people that determined the district 6 race wow. of a city of one, almost 1 million people 6,000 6,000 in one district you're looking at between 100,000 people then per district uh, mm. about and 6,000 made the decision for the masses because people don't understand that the local vote is absolutely popularity. Right. And policy is influenced by who votes. Mm. Policy mm. is influenced by who votes, positive or negative. Right. And so that's the reason why I have such a passion for it because I understood you have to be able to read and change laws for equality, for true equality. It has to be mandated. Right. So how in do this you, country, unfortunately. Uh, right. Uh, yes, absolutely. So how do you plan on involving residents in the decision making process of the city of Fort Worth, District 6, and just in general? Because like you said, voter turnout is is extremely, extremely low. And like you said, 6,000 
<laughs> that that's that's insane. It's shameful. It's shameful. Um, one of the things is I I hope to engage the community through this campaigning process. But one thing I am recognizing is that it takes a lot of money for that outreach. So mm -hmm. I'll be wielding my office uh, authority to show how. I am affected at the local level by decisions made at the state and federal level, keeping those lines of communication open, ensuring that I am not a bot candidate. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Yes. I will not be accepting donations of any sort from the police or fire departments. It's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. They have my ear just like everybody else will. Mm -hmm. They have my ear. I'm fully in support of them just like anybody else. At the end of the day, that's inappropriate. It's inappropriate. So I'll be explaining to the residents that I I don't have a, a, a bias toward anyone and that when I come or we have issues or things come up, that they can trust me and know there's nothing in it for me by not listening to them. And for the police, there's nothing in it for me to not listening to you. That or fire as well. All, all of them, any, any city department, they get picked on the most, but there's other city departments as well, like code enforcement and the like. So using the communications department, having uh, a, a quarterly update meetings, I my goal is to tell my constituents, I don't want you having to go out, taking time away from your Tuesday to complain about District 6 down mm -hmm. at City Hall where it's hard to park. You got to get out. You got to figure out a place to put the kids to go tell me something. You can talk to me prior to that. And then when we go to City Hall as a community, it's to get the other colleagues in the other districts on board so that we can get some votes in order in place so we can get those policies or whatever it is that we do need approved. So mm -hmm. my goal is let's talk about it before and okay. have action. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what we're going to do. Absolutely. I love that. I'm curious what you would say to people. You mentioned that you find it highly inappropriate for people kind of, you know, receiving, taking donations from fire department, police, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say to people who are like, well, I can't help if those are the people who are choosing to support me? I didn't ask. Why do you find it so inappropriate? I find the accepting of donations inappropriate. The endorsements are fine. The endorsements are fine. Okay. The endorsements are fine. I don't. I, I find the taking of donation because it feels like, you know, quid pro quo in a, in a minute. To, to me, it feels that way. Mm. Um, so I think it's, it's I'm OK with the endorsement. Um, and then you just see how they vote down the line, how that, or how that uh, particular elected official, you know, utilizes the endorsement. Could be a reason for it. They could be a former police officer, right? A, you know what I mean. So I, I, I have to look at that case by case, but for sure, no on receiving uh, uh, money. I think that's where it gets really kind of hairy. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit more because I'm curious. You in the beginning you mentioned your Blue Zone project, but tell yes. us a little bit more because I was super excited to learn more about that. I would love to. So I spent five whole years trying to transform the city um, and working toward making healthy choices easier for our residents. And that's with walking, right. eating uh, more healthy um, and and the like. And so, you know, finding your purpose, which hopefully this, you know, folks will see this is my purpose is helping people right. and, and using policy to support and, and, and to uh, make life easier for, for all of us, not just, you know, uh, my family, but for everyone my community yes. and so um i worked closely with south and southeast fort worth which is mm -hmm. funny because i lived in southwest fort worth <laughs> and so we created a phenomenal project called a well the walk in school bus was an initiative that blue zones had all around but what made it just incredible was in southeast fort worth we partnered with the ymca mm -hmm. and we had the silver sneakers walk the children of C.C. Moss Elementary to school every Wednesday. We oh. called it WOW, Walking on Wednesday. We worked with the Tarrant uh, uh, County uh, Public Health. We worked with Commissioner Roy Brooks's office. We worked with neighbors, residents, everybody. Everybody got involved. It was awesome. And people would sit on their porch as early as 7 a.m. to wow. see us walk those babies to school. And oh. it was just a really fun thing. And Unfortunately, due to COVID, right, right. That, that will look a little different right now, but I'm very hopeful that it'll go back. We received over $90,000 post Blue Zones project. I did not want to see that program go away. So mm -hmm. even though I knew I wasn't going to be staying with the program, I helped partner the YMCA and the school 
with a federal program to continue to incentivize those older adults to continue to walk with the kids. We have vests and flashlights and hopefully to increase the frequency of those walks. So that one was very near and dear to my heart. Right. Um, and, and in fact, as far as South, if, if I'm councilwoman, I remember my neighbors in, in Crowley, which I, I, I live on that, on the Fort Worth end. And um, they would say, Tisa, my goodness, we want to do the same thing. And I would be so exhausted from work because my job <laughs> was to work on the, on the other side. So it was sad to me that we weren't as active where I lived. Um, with blue zones, but you know you have to kind of maintain your your peace, if you will. Right. So I think as as city councilwoman, I'm going to absolutely tap back into that oh. and work with blue zones project and ask them: Is there a way that we can try to revamp or charge District Six back up and get us back on purpose? Especially after being isolated due to the pandemic, I think the timing would be great to oh, get absolutely. our older adults in senior living facilities and the like to get involved in blue zones and guard to do gardening and, and all the fun stuff. So absolutely. So that's what I'll do. I'll be I'll be leveraging relationship. And that's what makes me mm -hmm. a prime candidate is my experience in leveraging relationships that I've created um, along my career. Right. I, I, I can just talking to you, I can feel your passion, how passionate you are about community and how it's at the I center am. of your of your heart. I, I, I love that. So where do we go from here five to 10 years from now? What does the future look like you? If you're electing a woman, what, what are your hopes and dreams for the future? My hope is, you know, my last name is Leggett and I was making a joke that I'm the last leg of the race. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and, and, but that's not entirely true. This is absolutely a marathon. My, my mm -hmm. job is actually to pass the baton. So I'll be looking mm -hmm. for someone to run for district six and to take some of what we've done and make it better, or if they feel like it needs to be revamped, but get them involved. I think the biggest disservice you can do to a community is stay too long. Mm. That's the biggest disservice you can do. So mm. I've got vision that was created, not by Tisa Leggett's vision, but by talking to my neighbors and hearing from them what they feel like needs to be rectified. And mm -hmm. luckily I have the experience and I can leverage it. So then, as I continue my term, if, if I'm ultimately elected, then we'll determine about how long do I need to stay there. And then also, I got to be real honest with you, this is not a, a full-time job. It's, it, it, is, it is theoretically, but city council persons make $24,000 a year. That's why they end up taking money, I think, from mm. other entities. They don't make very much. So they have to have another job. I'm very young uh, in the sense of in the game of professional. I mean, I'm under 40, but I'll, I'll be turning 40 soon. And I understand the importance of me creating a, a life for myself and, and my family. So uh, I definitely don't want to to take away from my purpose as, as an individual. It is not my goal to, to, to take up a spot where I think a, sh a bright leader can come in and continue the work. That's not, that's not my plan. So five or 10 years from now, we're going to have a coalition of mm -hmm. community leaders who have the energy and the time to really invest in making the community great. So when you get out of office, it doesn't mean you're still not involved. It just means right. you're not solely responsible as a face of that of the community. For $24,000 a year, I don't think that's the expectation. But that's what people who have retirement money or things like that that can man maintain that type of lifestyle. That's where there's a lot of inequity, even in the type of candidates that we get. Because someone like me, who has to have a, a full-time job that's demanding in order to make the funds it takes to purchase a home or yeah. different things that we can't afford to have that that uh, $24,000 a year job. But that's how dedicated that I am mm. to this mission is to say, I'm willing to take the cut, I'll figure it out, but this has to be rectified now. Absolutely. So five to 10 years from now, we have a coalition. We're gonna have young people, I'm gonna get everybody involved in civics and understanding what it takes to, 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 to morph a community to be successful and great, as we know, um, District 6 in Fort Worth can be. Absolutely. I love it. So where can people go to learn more about you? And if they have any questions, maybe someone's watching who is a part of District 6, how can they reach you? I have some at the bottom, but if there's any other ways you want to sure. share as well. Absolutely. If you could please email me at info at Leggett, the number four, the letter D, the number six, 
com. Email me and I'm happy to, to respond. Or you can go on our website, www.leggett, L-E-G-G-E-T-T, the number four, the letter D, the number six, dot com. And you can see all of our information, our priorities are listed there. So in more detail, uh, a little bit about me is also, look. I mean, if you just, you know, want to know, but uh, <laughs> I definitely have a little bit about me on there. And um, we just are excited about some of the events that we're doing. I am going to be launching some uh, corner conversations in my district. And so those locations will be posted there as well. So we're going to go old school. We're going scrappy uh, with this campaign. We want to talk to the people. We want to be able to be accessible to all and you know you know how you see the tax folks who are in tax season and they're dressed up and they're talking on the corner we're going to do street corner the same way we're going to just talk to folks get ideas and encourage them to vote 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 even if it's not for me vote for somebody you got to get involved right i i agree well thank you so much for coming on the show you were fantastic and how are you Gosh, you educated us so much. And I know everybody's leaving here saying if they if they were just kind of going to blow it off, you made it pretty hard for us to just. <laughs> Good. You made it pretty hard. Good. Don't do it. Go vote. Vote, yes, vote. Go vote. Vote first. May 1st. May 1st. So thank you so much. We will definitely be following you and keeping up with everything you're doing. And I did want to mention, I saw you had something happening tonight, I think, on Zoom. Yes. We do, we do. Share that. Uh, Thank you. If you would like to volunteer with our campaign, please, 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 please sign up on my website, www.leggett4d6.com, and sign up to be a part of our Zoom call tonight. We're going to talk about some of those neat initiatives, out of the box initiatives to get voters out to not only vote, but hopefully to vote for me, um, I, an experienced leader who is ready to move forward and get to get the ground running. But there's no learning curve with me. We're gonna get going uh, <laughs> as soon as I, as soon as I'm elected for sure. We're gonna get going. We got one. I, I love that. Thank you so so much. And we yeah. obviously wish you the best. And we're rooting for you. And we will be keeping up with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And happy back anytime. This was fun. Of course, yes, we definitely will, especially if you get elected. We definitely I, will have you. So I'll stop by for sure. For sure. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. You Bye-bye. too. Bye-bye.